When we look at the S&P 500 purely from a dividend basis, we can see the majority of companies offer fairly low and perhaps insignificant numbers. Today, our focus is on two powerhouses that offer significant yields, especially for income investors. The first one, Ultra Group, with a yield of 8.1%, and the second one is British American Tobacco, currently sitting at 792 Now, we're going to look at these in detail. We're going to get to our own valuation and understand which one is the better if you want some very large dividends. Now, a few things that we have to note as well. Firstly, the industry itself, as we can see over time, a lot of people have started to smoke less. So this isn't necessarily an industry that we would say is growing. In fact, as we can see, this figure above shows us the change in proportion of those smokers among 12th grade American high school students and dates back to 1975. Now, maybe this isn't a population which is enough to warrant an investment decision on, but it is interesting to note that a lot of the research we have done, we can see that globally smoking does seem to be something that has been decreasing. Now, there are other alternatives which people have been taking up, and when we do look into the expectations moving forwards, there is still growth anticipated, in fact, over the next 10 years, and we can see this does sit around 2%. 2.9% going up to around 2033, so for around the next 10 years. Now, whilst this may not be very high numbers, ultimately, when you do invest in companies with high yields, the main thing that you want to focus in on is can they continue to pay out these very high numbers? That is effectively what you are gaining by having your capital invested in these companies. Now, the first one, as we said, Ultra Group has been on a pretty impressive run over the last 12 months. It is up 17%. However, if you have invested over the last 10 years, you would be up around 10%. Bear in mind, this doesn't include dividends reinvested. So if you were doing that, it would be higher, but has during the period underperformed the S&P. And we can see all time highs sitting around $77. We are talking around seven years ago. Currently, it sits 10% below the 52 week high, trading in the mid to upper end. As we mentioned, a very attractive yield and currently has a forward P of 9.9. .9. Now, we do know only one buy rating from Seeking Alpha with a hold from both Wall Street as well as Quant. We also want to point out that in terms of their earnings moving forwards, they are anticipating mid to high single digit increase year on year. Always nice to see. But when we do look historically over the last four quarters, they actually missed two of those estimates. And one of those was that more recent quarter two, although you could argue both misses have been very marginal. So we note around a 50% track record over the last year. We can also see some positivity over the next full year, December 2025. They're anticipating the earnings per share to increase and the forward P will come down to around 951. We also like to have a quick look to see what institutions are doing and around 57.41 is the ownership currently with around 3.21 billion worth of sales over the last 12 months. We do notice actually less buying over this period than they have been selling. Although when we look at the more recent quarter of that period, Q2, we do see more buying. So overall, yes, institutions are selling more. But in fact, in quarter two, which is the most recent data we have, institutions have in effect been buying more. We then take a look at some of their metrics. First thing to point out, dividend safety sitting at 55 borderline safe. So we can touch upon that. Very attractive yield, as we mentioned. And as we will come to see, nice to report a very recent increase of 4.1%. And why we like this, this is pretty much keeping in line with inflation, which is always very good when you are invested in companies with very high yields. Now, in terms of dividend safety, what the score of 55 means, well, firstly, was reaffirmed a few weeks ago, but effectively, there is a moderate risk of a dividend cut over the full economic cycle. Now, in terms of the last recession, how did Ultria Group perform? Well, what we note, in fact, Great Recession 0709, they increased the dividend. They had massively below average growth, negative 50%, but they also significantly outperformed the S&P in terms of return, negative 55%. In terms of the dividend growth, as we said, they did increase it pretty much in line with inflation just last month. But over the last five years, marginally higher at the 5% point. Unfortunately, though, over the last 20 years, sitting below inflation at 2%. And one thing that is very attractive with this company is that it has dividend king status. They have been increasing those dividends for more than 50 years. We also have this new valuation model where, as we can clearly see here, it does give us a reasonable valuation signal. 
In effect, it shows us over the last 20 years where the current price of the company has been in comparison to the expected fair value, as we can see from the blue element of the diagram. And when we zoom in over the last 12 months, we can see for the majority of the last year, in fact, it has been trading below the expected value, below fair price. Right now, though, we do see it sitting right there towards the mid to upper end, but we will conclude on valuation shortly on this episode. Then we get to dividend yield theory, which states the company is undervalued when the current yield sits above the five year average. So you could argue here reasonable valuation, 8.1, pretty much in line with the five year rolling. Same to be said for the forward P, Ultra at 9.6 isn't too far off the five year at 9.2. So a double reasonable valuation today. But we do note it does sit significantly lower than consumer staples at 17.7. Always bear in mind though, we don't look at any of these models in isolation. We will conclude towards the end. Now, how do we know companies' dividends are safe? Well, we tend to draw your attention to the free cash flow payout. Firstly, earnings is susceptible to manipulation by management through accounting, so we ignore this part. Below 85% is what we wanna see. And look, from 2018 onwards, so we are talking about the last six years, it has been below that level. 63 in 2023, always a good sign. The only thing we would say, expected to creep up slightly over the next 12 months to 90%. So something just to keep an eye on. Ideally, as we can see here, we want below 85%. We will also compare all of this data to British American tobacco as well. We then move on to the free cash flow where we want to see consistent growth over the long term. It has more than doubled over the last 10 years. Nice growth as well. We do understand some inconsistency on a year on year basis, but it does move in the right direction. Unfortunately, though, over the next 12 months, they are anticipating a hit to their free cash flow. Then we get to sales growth. As we mentioned, the expected compounded annual growth rate for this industry is around two to 3%. We pretty much see there or thereabouts over the last 10 years. However, the last two years have been negative, so their top line has been reducing. And ultimately, why we do say a minimum of 3% on this channel, because if a company isn't increasing their top line by that rate, Effectively, it is lower than the inflation target, and therefore, in terms of real numbers, it is decreasing. So, in effect, when we do take a look at their total sales, 18 billion in 2014, 21 in 2023, do understand this isn't like a fast growing tech company. We don't expect massive growth. Ultimately, this is a company that you would look at for the very high dividends, whether you use that for other purposes outside of investing or to reinvest. That is completely down to your own investment thesis. One thing that's also very nice with Ultra Group is they have returned excess cash through those share buybacks, although very small on a year on year basis. So don't expect massive amounts. And what we have noted from the more recent earnings, this is something they do expect to continue over the next year. We then get to ROIC looking very strong above 15% is what we want for tobacco companies. And in fact, from the lows of 2018, where it was 22%, it has been increasing very strong over the last two years. And ultimately these numbers give us faith that management are able to effectively allocate their capital. When we do come to look at it in comparison to BTI, Ultra Group does have a much better metric with regards to ROIC. Operating margin as well, we do note some very strong operating efficiency, not only above the minimum 25%, but increasing over the longer term, 59% over the last two years. These are some very strong signs for a company in this industry. And we can note this is a free cash flow machine. Last few years, very, very high, 40 to 50%. And it does look to be very consistent when you do broaden it out to the 10 year period. We then finally get to the net debt to EBITDA, which will be one reason why we have that dividend safety score, because ultimately this metric correlates to dividend safety balance sheet strength. We want to see below three for tobacco companies, number of years it would take the company to pay off all of their debt. And as we can see here, 2.54 in 2018, and it has been coming down to 1.79 in 23, expected marginally higher over the next 12 months. So we do believe that this company's dividend does look to be secure for now. No real reasons why we should have any worries, just something we would say, keep an eye on that free cash flow payout. Then we move to the valuation of Ultra Group. As always, if you enjoy the content, values being provided, smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button so you are continually notified of these videos as they drop. So our intrinsic value of $57, how we got that today where well, we ran through these three models. We have Graham's valuation model where we have the earnings per share, long-term growth rate, AAA corporate bond yield, giving us an undervaluation signal intrinsic value $59. Remember though, we don't look at any of these models in isolation. And whilst we have excluded the multiples valuation model today, you can see if we were to use it, it would give an intrinsic value of $64. 
The reason why we've excluded it, Ultra does trade at a very low PE in comparison to the others in the sector, so it would skew this process by quite some distance, but number is there if you do want to use it yourself. We then have the dividend discount model, very nice increases over the last few years at around the inflation point, as we can see 396 However, we've gone a lot more conservative at 1% and we can in fact see if they were to only increase it at that level moving forwards, we would still get another undervaluation signal. We then move on to the DCF model with the free cash flow year on year. Now average growth at around 12%, we've gone again conservative, negative three for those that do believe this industry is dying or they won't be able to increase it by a sufficient amount. We then use the discount rate to get the present value of future free cash flows and terminal value, add together with the cash, subtract total debt, get to the equity value, divide by shares outstanding, and as we can see here, our undervaluation signal. We then move on to the intrinsic value, as we said, the average of these three models, and you can always grab a copy of this model by clicking on the pinned comment below, running your own numbers, whether it's for Ultra, BTI, or any others that you do wish. So we then use a margin of safety, and we always like to start off with 10%, execute on that if it meets our three golden criteria, wide moat, strong financial metrics, and good forward-looking data. If you believe that, well, a buy up to $51, and that is pretty much where this company sits today at a 10% MOS. If we were to use 15%, you'd have to wait for 48, at 20%, around 46. But as we can see in today's episode, a 10% MOS. Wall Street aren't very bullish. They have a $51 price target with only 1% upside. But again, depending on what type of investor you are, this could be one to think about whether you're happy at a 10% MOS or if you do believe it will fall over the next few months. Now, before we jump into BTI, just to let you know, we are releasing our next free weekly article tomorrow morning. We typically talk about a market update from the previous week, as well as some undervalued dividend stocks for your own consideration. If you want access to this or any others, you can grab a copy by clicking on the pinned comment below, and you will also be able to grab our undervalued 25 dividend stocks for the month of September, where we also look at those that sit within our own portfolio. We have also released 22 dividend stocks with the most upside according to Wall Street. So again, do click on the pinned comment below where you can sign up and read straight away. So now we're taking a look at British American Tobacco. As we said, very attractive yield, 7.92%. We get now a double buy signal with a hold from Quant. This one is trading at the upper end of the 52 week range. And we note a forward PE sitting at 7.93. Over the last year, up 11%, lacking behind Ultra Group. And over the last 10 years, we actually get negative performance of negative 35 versus Ultra that we saw up around 10 to 11%. And all-time highs sitting in 2017, again, very similar period to Ultra Group at around $73, right now trading pretty much half that value. Now, we don't have any data in terms of how their earnings projections has been, but what we can see from December 2024, so this year full year, they are anticipating growth to continue to the earnings per share, bringing down that forward PE to around 7.64. We also note, in fact, unlike Ultra Group, institutions have been buying a lot more than they have been selling, 526 versus 402, but the institutional ownership does sit low at 21.44, and in the more recent quarter, they have been buying more shares. So not just in Q2, like we saw for Ultra Group, more institutional buys, but also in terms of the last 12 months, it does seem to be the case for BTI. Then we take a look at this company's dividend safety. So 10 points less than what we saw for Ultra, 45 board line safe. And we do also get a very mediocre increase in February at 2% as we saw with Ultra, at least in line with inflation, at 4.1%. So ultimately, it does still mean the very same thing here, that there is a moderate risk of a dividend cut. It is just nearer to that unsafe score than what we saw for the 55 for Ultra Group. In terms of last recession, while well, they increased the dividend, they had plus 5% sales, and they also outperformed the S&P, negative 31%. Over the last five years, 3%, so not the worst, ideally four, but over the last 20, nice to report, high single digit increase at 9% year on year. And they are one year away from becoming a dividend aristocrat, ultra group, a dividend king, as we can see here, BTI, when they hit those 25 years, they will become that very nice dividend aristocrat status. We also note another reasonable valuation based on this model. And when we do zoom into over the last year, we do see it trading right there towards the lower end of the expected fair value bucket. With Ultra, we saw it more towards the upper end. In terms of looking at dividend yield theory, where well, we do get a marginal undervaluation score, both on the yield as well as the forward PE. And we also similarly note it trades much, much lower 
than consumer staples at 17.7. Now, in terms of the free cash flow payout, a lot better than Ultra Group, significantly below 85% pretty much every single year, especially the more recent period. And we note 51 in 23, 64 over the next 12 months. Free cash flow share has also been increasing over the longer term and similarly an expected drop to this number over the next 12, 455 to 352. We then take a look at the sales growth again, very similar, negative 1% in the more recent period, negative 7 on a trailing 12 month. And when we do zoom out over the last 10 years, we do in fact see pretty much double their top line. But for the more recent last six to seven years, that top line has remained fairly flat. Whilst we commended Ultra Group for those share buybacks, we actually see BTI do the opposite where they have diluted your position as a shareholder over the last 10 years. However, from 2021, we do note whilst very marginal and very trivial, they have also done some of those share buybacks. ROIC, we already mentioned this when we did take a look at Ultra. It is a lot higher than BTI. In fact, from 2017 to 2023, it has been below that 15% that we do ideally want to see for this metric. Margins looking very good for this industry above the minimums, 25%, a little bit of operating efficiency and free cash flow margin. Again, another free cash flow machine looking very, very good, 38% on a trailing 12 month basis. In terms of net debt to EBITDA, well, below three over the last year at 2.65, expected a small drop over the next 12 months. And again, we can see if they are able to manage this debt level and bring it down, then we should get some alleviation from the very low dividend safety score. But ultimately, based on the low free cash flow payout, the dividend does look to be safe for the time being. Now, our intrinsic value of $49, if we start again going to Graham's valuation, we have all the numbers here. The intrinsic value clearly showing a massive undervaluation signal. For reasons, like we said, for Ultra Group, we aren't including this model, but you can see here the number if you want to incorporate it yourself. Then we move on to essentially the dividend discount model. Bear in mind, they do pay in GBB sterling, so this is more of FX fluctuations. But similar, we have gone from a very low conservative rate, and we do get here that undervaluation score. We then take a look at the DCF model as we already ran through how it works. We can see this intrinsic value at just under $50, ultimately giving us here, similar to Ultra, three undervaluation scores. Now, Wall Street do see a little bit more upside. We have 4% as opposed to one with their price target of $39. However, we do believe there is a larger margin of safety right now with BTI than we see with Ultra. Remember, MO had around 10%. And when we take a look at BTI, we can see that in today's episode, it is pretty much trading near a 25% level, not quite there yet, around 20 to 25%. Now, both companies have very nice attractive yields around the 8% and it will come down to what type of investor you are, whether or not these companies do attract you for your portfolio. And the second question is, which company do you want? As always, if you want us to do a deeper dive about the business model, their projections, their latest earnings, do give us your thoughts below. If you enjoyed the episode, it was a little bit different. Smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button so you are continually notified. Don't forget to sign up to the free weekly newsletter below and come and join us in the Patreon where we do talk about our weekly buys and sells. As always, have a great day and we'll see you all on the next one.